Hey everyone, in this lesson and the next two lessons, we're gonna be talking about unbalanced designs. In this video, we're gonna kind of go over unbalanced designs, type one and type three sums of squares, and then go into our statistical model our, and our ANOVA for unbalanced designs. So thus far, we've covered only balanced designs. And what a balanced design is, is that each treatment is assigned to the same number of EUs. Each block has the sum, same number of EUs and each block has a complete set of all treatments. So this, these three points right here are what are needed for a balanced design. However, what happens if we violate this, these balance conditions? So an unbalanced design are designs that violate, let me just highlight this, violate any of the following balancing properties. So if each treatment is not assigned to the same number of EUs, each block doesn't have the same number of EUs, and if each block doesn't have a complete set of all treatments, then we're in an unbalanced case. So to help motivate um, an important part or an important aspect of unbalanced designs, Let's first look at a cow nutrition example where we are in a balanced uh, case. So cow example one, well, that pen doesn't work. We're gonna go balanced. So we've seen this before. So an experimenter uh, was trying to conduct an experiment to determine the nutritional value of four diets for cows Five dairies participated in the study, each supplying a random sample of four cows. Four diets were randomly assigned to four cows in each dairy, and we're going to monitor the amount of hay consumed each day for each cow. So here's our data set. We have no missing data. All of our treatment block were under a balanced design, and here's our ANOVA table for it. This ANOVA table is brought to you by SAS. Um, the reason I'm using SAS output is because it thought it has a very clean way to just demonstrate the point that I'm going to try and get to right now. So here we have what we call our type one sums of squares and our type three sums of squares. And you can notice in this case that they're exactly the same. They're the same. And so here we would have a p-value less than 0 0.0001. We reject the null and we conclude that the diet has an effect on the amount of hay consumed. Now, more realistically, what could have happened was a cow got sick. And so in our second example, a cow did get sick, unfortunately. And we now have a data table that looks like this, where we're missing this big black dot. Missing. I made it exaggerated on the video for you guys. If we were to run our analysis and we get our type one and type two, or type one and type three sums of squares, you will notice that there are two numbers that don't match. And the numbers that don't match are this one and this one. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do is we're, we're gonna talk about why these are different and which ones we would want to use for our analysis in an unbalanced design. So type one sums of squares is also sometimes called these sequential sums of squares. And it's all about adding to the model sums of squares. So sums of squares type one tells us how much for a particular model term um, the factor, the interaction between factors, the explanatory variables, this, how much the sums of squares is reduced by adding the particular term to that model that contains all the other terms listed before it in the model statement, hence sequential. So now type three, which is the one we want to use for unbalanced designs, is gonna tell us 
for a particular term, how much the sums of squared error is reduced by adding that particular term to the model that contains all other terms in the model statement. Okay, so we're gonna now go through an, kind of an example to help understand this. So sums of squares type one and type three are essentially the same for a balanced design. So it doesn't matter which one you use. Why is this true? Unbalanced designs are orthogonal, um, which protects us from interference among factors. In jump will automatically default you to type three sums of squares. Our users, that's not the case. So please watch the video to make sure you're doing it properly. Uh, the type three sums of squares are also used for testing effects in unbalanced designs and they're adjusting for this imbalance. So let's look and explain a little bit more about what I mean by type one and type three sums of squares. So here we entered dairy then diet. So what I mean by enter dairy first diet in R we would probably write our model as response squiggle dairy plus diet. In jump in that box that you have, you would put dairy and then diet. And in this case, what's happening for type one, this right here, the first part is looking, oh, you guys can't see that. This first term with the type one sums of squares is just looking at a model with dairy. The second term is looking at the model of diet given that dairy is in the model. Okay, so type one right now with dairy, with this first term dairy, the only thing it treats it as only dairies in the model. Then it goes diet given that dairy is in the model. Type three sums of squares is different though. What that does is for this first one, it treats it as if you have dairy given diet. And the second one is diet given dairy. So it's gonna condition on everything else in the model. You'll also notice that right here and right here, the last term in your type one sums of squares will always match your type three, whatever is last, okay? So let's go to a different case. Here we enter dairy first, then diet. This would be the correct way to do it in jump or R. Again, jump will default it, it doesn't matter, but R it's gonna matter. This would be the correct way because we're testing diet given the dairy. Now, if we were to enter it incorrectly, such as this case, so this case we look here and we see diet and dairy. How that would look in um, computer, the computer is you'd have your response, squiggle, diet plus dairy in jump. I'll show you how to get your type one. So this will make a little bit more sense. But again, it would be diet and dairy. So here, what this would read is the model with just diet. This one would read dairy given diet. And again, these two are read the exact same way as up here before. This would be the incorrect way to input it. Because what this would be testing is our diet given our dairy. And so you'll notice if we look at our F values, we know our type three sums of squared is always right. So we have a 9.04. If we put it in correctly, we can also see that these F values 
from the above table are also correct. And where it differs is when we incorrectly did it and we get a nine, uh, 907. So this again is incorrect. So what the sums of square or sums of square type three is doing, it's the effect of the factor given that you've adjusted for everything else, where the type one is it's sequential. So the first one is just itself. And then the second one is adjusted for the previous ones. Why am I mentioning this? Uh, mentioning this is because whenever you're using computer code or programming, you always want to make sure you know what type of sums of squares you're using. Again, in a balanced design, type one and type three, they're the same. But if you're in an unbalanced case, you need to make sure you're using a type three, or you need to be make, make sure you're inputting it properly into the computer. Jump users, again, it will default to type three for you. I'll show you how you can see the sequential just so you have it for your um, bank of knowledge. Our users, I'm gonna step you through how to do this in code to make sure you're getting the right answers for unbalanced designs. The other thing we might want to look at is the means versus the least square means. So when using an unbalanced design, we should use um, the LS means rather than the means to make comparisons. So if there's no missing data, the LS means and the regular means are the same. So right here we have no missing data. And we can see that our means are equivalent. So awesome. But when we have missing data, we can notice um, how I know we have missing data is here's our n. So this is our number of samples. This has four and not five. And so we're missing data in this column. But these two don't match. The best way to think of LS means is it's a weighted average. So we're doing some weighting to account for the fact that we only have four observations in diet four. And so maybe we wanna weight it more than the others. LS means is also an unbiased estimate of the parameters. And again, jump will default to this. Our users, I'll show you how to do it. So thus far, when I've talked about unbalanced designs, especially with the cow example, I talked about missing data. But we could also have what is called a balanced incomplete block design, which we'll go um, into more in our next lecture. But what a balanced incomplete design is, is when we break the violation of, does it, each block doesn't have a complete set of all treatments. So let's just look at an example for this, and then we'll move into our statistical model, parameter estimation, and ANOVA table for unbalanced designs. So a chemical company needs to evaluate five formulations of a paint for consistency of color. Four samples of each formulation are evaluated on a daily basis. Their labs has five technicians, each of which can evaluate at most four samples per day. An appropriate design is a balanced and incomplete block design. Again, we'll talk about that in the next lesson. Our data or our outline of our data looks like this. And so here with a balanced incomplete block design, it is still unbalanced because we don't have every treatment in each block, but we do have partial balance. And what partial balance means is that each pair of the formulations is evaluated by three technicians. So let me just show you an show you what I mean by that. So if we took pairs, what I mean by pairs is A B, A C, B D, a pair of treatments. So let's look at the pair of treatments A B. We can see A B. We can also see that technician four had AB, and we can also see that technician three 
had AB. If we were to look at a different pair of treatments, maybe let's say BD, we see technician one had BD, we can see technician five had BD, and we can see technician three also had BD. And if you continue that, you'll notice that each pair will have or will be seen by three technicians. And this has a lot of good properties, which we'll talk about in the balanced incomplete block design lesson. So this is just another example of balanced incomplete. So far, we've talked about mostly unbalanced RCBDs. Um, for our case, we had our cow was missing an observation and in the chemical, we were missing one treatment. Now let's talk about how to do a statistical model parameter estimation and ANOVA for an unbalanced RCBD model. With the statistical model, um, you're going to follow the statistical model that your design closely matches. So it's going to depend on the type of design. Right now we're talking about RCBDs, an unbalanced RCBD. But let's say we were talking about maybe an unbalanced Latin square then your model would follow the Latin square a statistical model that we just talked about in our last lesson. And then you would add the statement that not all IJ pairs are representative. Okay, so again, for unbalanced whatever designs, your statistical model is going to most closely match whatever your design was. In this case, we're going to be doing RCBDs. Our Summary statistics, again, for our RCBD unbalanced, we have our treatment mean, our block mean, and our grand mean, and we have our parameter estimates. They should look familiar, but note in a RCBD balanced, our parameters were unbiased. In an unbalanced RCBD, these parameters here are no longer unbiased due to the unbalance of the design. However, we can use the least square treatment means provided by jump and have unbiased estimates. And again, we can get those in R as well. Our ANOVA table is now this, where we again are going to be using the type three sums of squares. One thing you might notice that's a little bit different compared to a balanced RCBD is our degrees of freedom. And I just wanna to touch on this if you have been paying attention. Um, I've gotten questions about this before. So in a balanced RCBD, our degrees of freedom for our error are B minus one, T minus one. Okay. If we were to expand this, it would become B times T minus T minus B plus one, where this BT is our N. Because we're in a balanced design, our number of treatments is equal to our number, um, is equal in the number of blocks. So we can have B times T. In an unbalanced case, this isn't true, so we have to go back to the expanded form of just using n. Okay, so if that interests you, there you go. But other than that, everything's still the same. Our MST, our mean squares, are still calculated through taking our sums of squares, type three, divided by our degree of freedom. We still want to have our test for treatments, and there is no test for block. With that, we're going to head into our next lesson where we'll be talking about the balanced and complete block design. And then in lesson 6C, we will be doing examples with our software incorporated in the videos.